Welcome to my channel. How are you today? I am excited about what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about will be something that all of us, I think, have experienced. Something that all of us is very familiar with. Something that all of us could have been ourselves at one time or another. So today we're going to talk about dealing with difficult people. I know, right? Okay, so that's why I say that sometimes we could have all been that difficult person at one point. Sometimes we have dealt with difficult people at some point. So I know that this will be a subject that we all can learn from. So the first thing I would like to go over is the different situations that you could be um, in when dealing with difficult people. For example, a difficult person could be a spouse. A difficult person could be your children. A difficult person could represent your boss. A difficult person could represent a parent, a friend, siblings. <clears throat> a difficult person could be someone you just happen to run across. So the reason why I chose this subject is because sometimes um, we can find ourselves in webs with difficult people. And the webs are owned by them and created by them. Okay, the webs are not created by us, but we're just entangled in these webs. And so at this time, I would like to go ahead and help you to identify a difficult person. Okay, so a difficult person can be someone who complains a lot. Things could look fine to you and all of a sudden they just complain about everything. You all could be talking about a great situation that's on the up and up and they'll find something wrong with it. They're extra. If something happens, let's say something small happens, such as, <laughs> um, let me just think of something, such as they can't find something for the moment, or you forgot to turn something in at the office, that's not really a big deal. They'll make it a big deal, just because they're a difficult person. Um, so they, they do extra. Also, they're grumpy. A difficult person can be grumpy. A difficult person can be a little happy. A difficult, pers difficult person can be many people, okay? They can have different type of attributes or things that you give you, like confused look like, okay, you know, can't figure them out, right? A difficult person um, sees others as the problem, typically. They never see themselves as a problem. And if they do see themselves as a problem, they don't admit it. Okay, and keep in mind that a difficult person don't really know that they're difficult. They just think that they're normal. And so those are some of the characteristics of a difficult person, okay? That's just a, that's just a little bit that I gave you. There's a whole slew of them out there though. <clears throat> you might wanna take time and reflect, okay, on some others I didn't even name yet. Okay, so Let's talk about what happens when you're entangled in this web, when you're um, going toe to toe, punch to punch with this difficult person. Oftentimes there's arguments going on, disagreements, whether it makes sense, a lot of arguments, okay? Or there's simply disagreements where you're the quiet one because it's your boss or somebody you're trying to respect and uphold, you know, do the right thing. Or <clears throat> both of you all, depending on the situation, could go, keep going back and forth. This difficult person in your life, guys, bring you stress. You, you find yourself just stressed out. And it's not by anything necessarily that serious or anything that you're necessarily doing all the time. It's just this person, it's, the reason why they're called difficult is because they are. <clears throat> they, to a certain degree, will make your life a living hell if you allow them to. Okay, so some of the things that happen when you're entangled in this web is, like I was saying, arguing. You might have some crying going on, some screaming. Um, you might have be stressed. You might be angry, okay, very angry. Um, you might want to find yourself somewhere and run. You think to yourself, if I could just get out of here, you know, an escape method is running through your mind. How can I get out? You know, how can I detour this person? Because I don't want to argue. Okay? Um, some kind of scheming. Because after it's over, you want to get them back for whatever's going on because they've done you wrong. <laughs> you 
Maybe that was just me at the time, but yeah. Just kidding, guys, but really when you think about it, those are some type of things that happen when you're entangled in the web of a difficult person. You're very stressed out. Almost to the point where you don't know if it's ever gonna end, okay? I'm not really talking about people who, who deal with difficult people on a monthly basis. You might run into a difficult person when you go out to eat. You might run into a difficult person on, on the road. That's really what I'm not talking about, okay? I'm talking about the average person that has to deal with a difficult person and typically the same difficult person over and over and over. That's what we're talking about here today. Let me go ahead and give you some pointers on how to deal with these people. So I got just ate popcorn. Some kettle corn, it was good too. All right, so the first thing, and before I give you the tips, let me just start off by saying, I feel your pain. I feel your pain, okay? I know what it's like to deal with difficult people long-term. I know what it's like to grow up with difficult people long-term. I know what it's like to have a friend that's difficult, siblings that's difficult, you name it, I've already experienced it. And it is tough. But let me just tell you, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and you can do this. So here are my four tips, okay? There are many tips, but I'm just gonna give you four today, okay? <clears throat> Number one, when you're dealing with a difficult person, you want to be familiar with their setups, okay? These people have setups. What do I mean by setups? They're triggers. They have triggers. Since this is a difficult person, typically anything can tick them off, but they have specific things that you might do that may just send them into an enrage, okay? And so you want to learn these setups. You want to learn these triggers so that you can ultimately try to avoid them. Not that this is going to be your life goal. Not that this is going to be what you live to do is make this person and tiptoe around in life or so forth. This is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there has to be somebody who's thinking here. If you know the person that you're around is difficult, they have triggers. They have setups. Try your best. So basically, you're customizing when you you come into contact with this person that that light bulb will go on okay i don't know how to do this it's a rule it's a list sometimes it's a real long list sometimes it's just a couple of things or you know it just depends on that difficult person you're just making sure that you're not going to be causing any kind of friction as much as possible with this difficult person okay and so <clears throat> i have a little list here it is your goal if you have to be around them not to pull their triggers okay This, oftentimes, it takes time to learn a person's personality. The person that's difficult believe that you should notice off the bat. They, they get so enraged at the smallest things like you should just know you shouldn't have did that. It's simple as, hey, your boss is wanting you to, like I said, turn in those papers and, and you didn't know the deadline. It was a simple mistake, but they'll just enrage it. They'll just make it bigger than what it is. And so that's something to look at okay just learn the person personality and try to do the best that you can it's my step number one it's rule number one rule number two guys not gonna like this rule but it is simply have compassion have compassion on this difficult person truth be told they weren't born this way truth be told they were made into this way. Something happened. Someone said something, someone did something that caused this person so enraged, so angry, so frustrated um, that they now have lost control. You wanna have compassion, because guess what? A lot of us have already visited that platform and we know what that looks like and we know what it feels like ultimately. So you wanna have compassion on this person with this person when they come try to be more sensitive to them and their needs and their wants and try to understand them okay if they are difficult people um or a difficult a difficult a difficult person that simply means that they are not happy let me say that again a difficult person simply means that they are not happy i can't say they're just miserable with their entire life but what i can say is when they interact with you and if they're difficult as you think they are, they're not happy at that particular place. So a person can go to the office and be a difficult person and the person can go home and be the sweetest thing you've ever seen. 
Just saying here, okay? I know that's two different person personalities. We can't go through that right now. But I'm just saying it is capable. But just say at that particular time, that person is not happy. They're stressed. They're tense. They're frustrated. Something's going on, okay? <clears throat> I remember in particular, there was a woman uh, at work and she would give me such a hard time. Every time I was late, every time I wasn't on duty, on stance, or it could have been for a good reason. She just thought it should be for some reason communicated with her, although she was not my boss. She was basically, guys, all up in my business. For what? I don't know. Really didn't care. But I just noticed that she took special attention. She paid special attention to me. And it became an issue. Because she would ask around, well, where's Miss Thomas? Well, where's Miss Thomas? Well, where's Miss Thomas? And I was like, why is she asking for me? Well, eventually I just... <laughs> and this happened, guys. I wind up not having to say anything to her, but what happened was I wind up finding out what was truly wrong. And it wind up happening, this lady had a lot of home issues, husband, spouse issues. She had some deep things, if I were to name right now, guys, it would knock you off your seat. And so with that, with that being said, I began to have compassion. That was truly a lesson for me. Cause I didn't wanna, I was to the point where I was about to tell her something. I wasn't going to curse her out of nothing. But she was going to know, hey, you don't want to mess with me. Um, because it's almost like um, she was just poking. Poking. And so it this this spanned over months, guys. This was not like a quick situation where um, she did something I wanted to go off on her. Because I'm real patient usually with people. But <clears throat> I did want it to end. And nicely put her in her place. And so before I got the chance to do that, like I said, things unfolded. I found out some serious personal issues she had at home. And I wound up having compassion almost to the point where I felt really sorry for her. I actually went up to her and we spoke about it. And we never had to go through that again because um, I let her know that, you know, I understood, you know, not that she was bothering me. We didn't even bring that part up. But more like to give her some advice or just have that compassion, have that little um, support that she might have needed doing that trial in her life. So keep that in mind, guys. The next thing that I would like to go over right now is the third step, don't quarrel, okay? I'll say that again. Do not argue with difficult people. And I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, it's a waste of time. Usually a person like that always thinks they're right all the time. There is nothing you can do. In fact, while you all are having a disagreement, words, of course, go back and forth, words are exchanged, and so forth. In fact, if you are engaged in an argument with a person, they will sometimes even twist your words to where you said something, to where the way you said it is not the way they're going to say that you meant it. They're going to twist your words to make it seem like you meant something else. Why? because that's really how they think that you meant it, okay? <clears throat> so that's why I say don't even argue with them. They will twist what you said, or they'll say, you didn't say that. I didn't hear you say that. You didn't say that. They will do that to you. <laughs> it's crazy. I know some of you all are laughing like, ah, oh, yeah, like a light bulb moment went off. I'm telling you, they will do that to you. And don't take it personal. You know why? Because in the end, you are arguing with a brick wall, okay? The person typically, if they twist your words, they really did not know that you meant it that way. The way you said it is the way they thought it. They perceived it. You were misunderstood in the end, but you can't tell them that. There's nothing you can say or do with this person. To a certain degree, you can't even do right by this difficult person sometimes, right? So... You don't want to argue with them. They only just enrage the fire. To a certain degree, this person enjoys arguing with you. If they're a difficult person, they want to let some steam off oftentimes, and from my experience, guys. And they want to argue with you sometimes. Doesn't it seem like they want to just argue with you while you're trying to look for a way out? They're enjoying this to a certain degree. They're just difficult people. Okay? They get a pass for that to a certain degree, guys. Because why? They're unhappy with their lives. What can you do? 
All right, and this takes us to our my last step, which is to move on. Move on in your life. If it's a job situation, go to work. Your focus is not, and I repeat, not to please this person every day. Your, per your focus is to go in the office and do the very best that you can do. That's all you can do, day by day. Are you gonna make some mistakes? Absolutely, you're not perfect. And when you do, don't even beat yourself up. That's your job. Your focus should never be on people. Your focus should never be about making them feel, you know, trying to be a people pleaser. That's what that can turn into, okay? Your focus is to try when they come in the room or they come in your office for a second, to go, hey, let's go. You know, we have to conversate. You ha you're at work, a work environment. Do your job. That's it, to the best of your ability. No one should require you for to do more. And, and oftentimes difficult people do. They want you to be Superman or Superwoman, and you're not able to do that sometimes, okay? Great on those days you can, but again, we don't live to please people, okay? So you wanna move on, find some perks at work that make you happy. Your cup of coffee, your morning cup of joe, listening to some background music on your little radio, um, going to see certain co-workers at their office or in their classroom, or, you know, when you see them or when you look forward to some meeting with them. Engage and surround yourself around people and things that will brighten your day. When you're in, when you're constantly with a difficult person, no difficult person gonna be there, your eye should not be on them, your eye should be on you, okay? So move on, to a certain degree, the unhappy person wants to en encase you in their web. We've talked about that. You have got to live your life. Sometimes you can get in an argument with a person and you're down for about three days. That thing has about, you can't sleep. Some of you lose your appetite, some of you overeat. And it's just, it, in case, it does encase you. You're concerned. You want it to end. You're trying to figure things out. And then here you go. Once you get through that one, then they come with something else. That's why I say just move on. Don't even quarrel with them. Don't even do all the extras. It's unnecessary. And in the end, it's going to just cause you stress in your body. It just go out of whack and everything. So move on. If you're living with a difficult person, I'm sure it's not 24 hours, seven days a week. Find some things. Go for a walk. Go out with your friends sometimes. Go watch some television. Catch up on the internet. Watch some YouTube. Hey, do some homework. Let's read a book. Whatever makes you happy. Go do it. Go do it. So in conclusion, guys, today, and I hope that this video has helped most of you all get through this season of your life where you have to deal with this difficult person. But I would like to leave you with a pondering question on today. And the question will be, why did you seek the living amongst the dead? I'll ask that again. Why are you seeking the living amongst amongst the dead thank you guys i've really enjoyed this i really hope that this has touched your hearts and made you think that you can go on like you can make it now i'm signing off you can reach me at carla with the c thomas lifecoaching.com and that is my website that's my blog i have a lot of positive affirmations there you can sign up for a free life coach session with me there are so many tools there talk about stress depression anxiety um and so you can go there and we can walk through this journey together thanks guys for tuning in and i'll see you next time